Welcome back. My name is Jeannie Dixon and this is video number two of a four-part watercolor series. In this video we will talk about watercolor techniques. My goal is for you to explore with me some of the exciting ways in which you can use watercolor. Let's dive in. We will be working on this Strathmore 400 series spiral watercolor pad and it's 140 pounds cold pressed. We will be using some washi tape to create a quick grid and I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. One of my favorite things to do is lettering with watercolor, so I'll take this opportunity to letter the title of this exercise. Let's dive into our first technique called wet on wet. Using clean water and a medium sized brush, we're going to wet the entire first section of our grid. Now drop some color over the wet paper. Notice how the color spreads. The more water, the more rapidly the paint will spread. Less water, less spreading, and less movement. So we are applying wet paint over wet paper. This is wet on wet. Try practicing with different levels of moisture on your paper to see and learn how the paint behaves. Let's move on to our next technique, the flat wash. Begin by creating a large puddle of watery paint. I'm holding my pad up to a slightly 45 degree angle. This will help me keep a leading edge at the base of my stroke. Load the brush and pull it evenly across the paper. Once you have reached the bottom, make sure you soak up any excess moisture to avoid any back runs. This next technique is called blooms and it's one of my favorites. So we'll be applying a layer of color and while it's still damp, we will drop water. The water will push the pigment and create a back run or bloom. Some watercolor artists will avoid creating blooms, but this is a great way to give your paintings an organic look. Next, we will be creating a gradient or what is known as a variegated wash. We will be blending one color into another. So begin by creating two large puddles of watery paint. Try choosing two colors that blend well together. Next, follow the first few steps of the flat wash technique. But this time, you will add clean water to your mixture to create the lighter values. Now, before your first gradient dries, turn your pad upside down and repeat the process with the second color. You can work your gradient a couple of times while it's still wet. The fifth technique we'll be exploring today is wet on dry. We'll begin by painting a background with a very light color. Once I'm done, I'm going to let it dry completely. Let's go back to that flat wash. Notice how the color is very light. So now that I have allowed it to dry completely, I'm going to paint another layer to make that color deeper. Let's go back to our wet on dry technique. Now that the first layer is dry, I'm going to paint a few leaves over it. So we are applying wet paint over dry paper. For this part, I've switched to a smaller brush to create the finer details. The last technique I would like to show you today is called scumbling. This is a wet on dry technique that I often like to use to create visual texture. You can use this technique to paint foliage or the abstract center of a flower. Load your round brush with a thick mixture of paint. 
Next, you're going to dab with the tip of your brush to create the darker values. Now rinse your brush and soften the edges with clean water to create the lighter values. You can use a heat tool to speed up the drying process. Now that it's completely dry, I can repeat the process with a second color. Now that you've allowed everything to dry completely, gently peel off the washi tape and label each of your techniques for future reference. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the other videos in this series.